the duck man said, let there be light. <laughs> and Gregory said, F you! <laughs> Let's see if we can pull these windows out of here. They're pretty clean from when I've cleaned them. I want to see what's behind these window frames. Oh, shit. Okay, well that one came out easy. <laughs> Wonder if I even needed the Windex on there. Let's see if we get so lucky on this side. This one was already broken. Not the least bit surprised that I made it worse. When they're compromised, that's just what they do. All right. Those came out a lot easier than I expected. I thought there was gonna be a few minutes of picking and peeling and cutting and rubber. All these little plastic bits need to go in the trash. All right, this window frame is not as bad as I thought it was. I got some damage here in the middle. Little damage right here and here. This whole section is shot. I'm right about the windshield wiper to here. The side post is fine. The side post on that side is fine too. The center post also doesn't look to be, well, you know what? No, it's compromised on the inside. And the tops are shot. Okay, it's a good thing I got a replacement part for this. Looks like about 75% of it's gonna be replaced. Everything pretty much except for the sides. And what I'll do is I'll just cut it right along here. This won't be very hard to install. No, this isn't very hard to install at all. Okay. This is gonna go in pretty easy. It's gonna do it uh, kind of the same style as I did it over on Eleanor. I cut this vertically on both sides, and then I laid her new windshield into place, welded it around, and then I cut down the post and put the roof to where I wanted it. All right, before I cut anything out of this though, because I know what's gonna happen. If I cut all this out, this is gonna sag. <laughs> so I'm still trying to figure out how I wanna do this without hacking everything to bits. What I'm probably gonna do, I think, is I'm gonna put some reinforced braces, probably from each of the A-pillars down to the dashboard somewhere here in the center. This is ashtray, I'm just kinda surprised it's even still in there. You know, actually, that's a kind of convenient thing to have just for putting coins in and stuff. But I don't think I'm gonna use this. Maybe I'll get a bigger tray that I can drop in there that makes a little more sense. I could drop all kinds of stuff in there. Heck, I could put a cell phone in there standing up vertically with GPS on. That solves that problem. Yeah, that's a great idea. Okay, things to think about. Working my way into the future. Yeah, the whole center in here. The back side of this is shot. I gotta get a wire brush and go through here. It looks like this is fine. And the back side of it's fine too. But the less of it that I have to replace, I think the better off I'm gonna be. Yep, we got a plan. Okay, this is not what we're gonna jump on first though. It was just something I had to get a good safe look at. I think what I need to do before I fix this is fix the bottom. <laughs> hey, welcome back to Duckman Cycles and VW Garage. I'm your host, the Duckman. <laughs> We're back today with my Volkswagen bus named Gregory. And as you probably saw over on the other channel, we got a ton of CIP1.com parts for this bus. And I'm so happy that they partnered up with me on this project to, uh, to get Gregory done. Oh boy, just felt a raindrop, not a good sign. Um, the hurricane is still spinning off the coast of the other side of Florida. It's actually like, if where Earl is at is 500 miles from me and the storm is kind of projected to now it's possibly just gonna miss him but get damn close so he's still in a little bit of a uh, a little bit of a frenzy he's a little worked up over it so hopefully Earl by the time you're watching this video uh, the hurricane should have passed you and I hope you're doing just fine and of course my baby girl Eleanor is over there to have all of her beautiful paintwork done by Earl 
So yeah, big things are happening over there in Classic Car Creations. Anyways, today what we're gonna do is we're just gonna kind of wander around the bus and kind of come up with a little bit of a game plan as to what we're gonna do next and what we're gonna do first. We've already looked at the front windows as you saw from the opening of this video. We'll have a look down at the floor. I know I still need to do a little trimming where the old floor still was at. I still need to pull out steering wheel pedals, all that stuff. Anyway, we'll get to that in just a minute. So as always, check out the links down in the video description. You're gonna find not only my social media, also links to my website, duckshit.net, but you're also gonna find links to CIP1 and all of their different social media links. And you need to support them because, hey, they're supporting me. So thank you very much, everybody at California Import Parts. You guys have been awesome. I really, really appreciate you. I mean, it's it, this is massive to me, this is massive to me because this allows this project to get done a whole lot faster and it brings videos to my YouTubers that are yeah, highly demanding them and demanding that I release them faster uh, to be able to get things done in a, in a faster fashion. And um, well, I'm overjoyed, I'm excited, and I'm talking too much. So let's go ahead and get to work on this project. <laughs> Licky likey, comment, subscribe. <laughs> Well, I'm a little lucky I didn't break those bulbs, that's for sure. <laughs> that could have been a mess hell, it could have cut me. I don't like working around fluorescent bulbs just for that reason, but um, they'll be replaced with LEDs down the road. Just right now, this is gonna work just fine. Okay, down here in the front floor area, I've got the new floor to rebuild that. I've also got all the pieces to rebuild the front valence up in here behind the uh, V-shaped nose. So I'm pretty much ready to start pulling this all apart and see. Um, what in there needs to be replaced. Just looking at it from where I'm standing, I see rust holes all over the place. There's a lot of small rust holes, but they're just there everywhere. So what I'm gonna start doing is just start getting in there with a wire brush, and where the holes start getting bigger, we're gonna start cutting things out, and uh, either start repairing holes, or we're just gonna replace the whole panel. And the reason why is, well, look at this. Boom! There's the entire front end just pre-assembled. I just laid it right here inside of um, the back of Gregory to get a good look as to how it's gonna fit together. And uh, those are pretty much all the major parts that you can see from the interior. And I'm not really sure how everything goes together. I figured there'd be like little seams that would attach or lay over, but they don't, they don't look to do that. And when I look up here in the front, you know, I don't see anything like that either. So I don't know, it's, it's gonna be a little bit of a mystery. I hope things kind of just drop into place, kind of, sort of. And then I'll probably have to coax things with a little bit of a hammering motion here and there and then trim a little extra off the ends. This is the part where it's kind of critical for door alignment, as this door does sag a little bit. That bottom hinge, I don't know if you'll be able to see it if I lift the door, but the bottom hinge has a little bit of play in it, which causes the door, as you see, not to close straight. I can actually have a fingers gap in there, so you gotta lift up the door a little bit to get it to close. And it's only slight, it's only slight, but the sag is dramatic enough that it needs to be fixed. So yeah, I'll have to get in there and fix that uh, lower, lower, hinge area. In fact, you can see it, there's a big hole right there on the bottom. And that's probably the reason why that flexes so much. Of course, I've got the piece to fix that too, so we'll get in there and start tearing that up. Uh, you know what, I think the first thing we need to do is pull that bumper off. Let's see what's up behind the bumper. Well, there wasn't much left for bolts on here. I turned one bolt, that was it. And this thing looks like it's gonna come out. And to my surprise, I thought the tow bar was welded to the frame. Turns out it was welded to the bumper brackets. Well, that makes my job a whole lot easier to remove it because I thought I was going to have to do a whole lot of cutting underneath. But <laughs> All right, that just saved me a couple hours of work. Holy crap. All right, well, let's see if we get lucky on the rest of this. But across here in the middle, you can see that piece of sheet metal that just fell out. It was actually laying on top of the tow bar when I got the bus home. <laughs> This is uh, up in here, somebody's bullshit repair. You can actually see the line underneath the headlight. Somebody grafted in a piece of metal there and didn't do a very good job. So we're gonna be digging into that. Uh, hopefully it's just some flat sheet metal. If not, well, then I'm gonna get the bottom front piece from CIP1 and uh, get this taken care of. 
I already know what's gonna happen up here, but I wanted to share it with you guys. <laughs> Yeah, nice. This is uh, this is gone. Oh, duck man, where's your gloves? You're gonna cut the shit out of yourself. Not if you know how to touch metal. <laughs> oh my god, look at this. Oh my god, there's nothing left. Holy Christ, there's nothing left. <laughs> There's nothing left, I don't believe it. Now well, that's still there. Oh no. This is all nice and crispy. Looks like we're gonna be replacing the bottom of the nose here. A couple inches from it there. And this here. It looks like the moisture got into their work, whoever it was that did this work. In fact, you can see some of the cuts in there. Um, okay. <laughs> well, that's not good. That's not good at all. I usually recycle as much as I can, but stuff like this, I don't bother. Just get it out of here. Now you guys are gonna have a laugh at this. Right over here, you see that little slot that I started to cut into it with the Sawzall. I was gonna try to put a relief cut in it to remove the center section of this piece under here. And then it ended up peeling off of the ends of the frame because the welds were rotted through. The frame ends look pretty good, but this piece is completely gone. Now let me show you what this piece is supposed to look like. <laughs> Once again, absolutely nothing left of it. Unfriggin' believable. Just wow. Well, anyway, that has to go up underneath there. It's looking like I'm gonna have to cut a piece out of the nose too, so slot it up in there, but uh, we'll see. I might be able to spread the brackets a little bit and shove it up in there. I just wanna shove it in there for size. But that's the reason why the uh, A-pillar lower hinge on the driver's side over here sags, because this whole piece in the front here isn't keeping the, uh, the bus square anymore. I think the floor also provides some rigidity to stop the sides of the bus from coming in this way. And that's the problem also when the door opens to as wide as it's supposed to go, the door will actually push inwards and sag the uh, underside of the bus. So uh, before I weld this in, I'm definitely going to have to brace that door. Probably put a jack up underneath the door a little bit, lift it up a little higher than where it's supposed to be, get everything welded in together, then release the door. And doors naturally have a little bit of sag on them, but it should sag into the proper position. So that's why I'm just gonna go just a little bit higher than what it should be. And of course, if it ends up a little bit too high, well, I can tweak it. But if it's too low, it's a pain in the ass to get it back up there. So yeah, so that's where we're at. But unbelievable, that piece is all that's left of this thing. That's it. There's nothing else left of it. Uh, the other metal looks like it's in the surrounding area and above it looks pretty good. Oh, and one more thing. Check out this juicy little tidbit over here. This piece right here, this was somebody's bullshit repair. This was glued in with Bondo. That's right, somebody Bondoed that sucker in there. Bondo is not epoxy. I could have epoxied it in, it probably would have been effective, but no, somebody glued it in with Bondo. Obviously, that's not gonna hold. So now you can see where my cut line is probably gonna have to be. It'll probably be right about at that straight edge that's up there where his piece of metal ended. Um, I will hit it with a, a sander and try to take off all the top layers, Bondo and everything else that's there to make sure there's no other patches, welds, or any hidden rust. In fact, the whole front end needs to be stripped down anyway. But uh, this is probably the worst and hardest rust to fix on this bus is gonna be right here in this front area because there's so many different pieces that come together in so many different layers. The rest of the bus isn't too bad. Really, it's not too bad at all, but this one is, uh, the bus is everything. This V-shaped nose is iconic. And if anything about this doesn't look right, then it's not even worth fixing, if you know what I mean. So yeah, this is one of those things that I gotta put a lot of attention on, and this will probably be the hardest part of the bus. I think everything else from here after this will be easy. But uh, yeah, <laughs> I still can't believe it. That's all that's left of that. Unbelievable. 
Well, after cutting out that front piece, you can see just how much is missing. It's gone. <laughs> I'm actually rather surprised that the bus is still standing in the front, that it hasn't started to sag or just collapse or fall down. But if I grab this door, look right here at the front frame, right where it attaches to the front of the bus. I'm gonna lift the door up and down. Watch what you see there. You see how the body goes that way, but the frame stays still. So yeah, that's uh, it's not even supporting it anymore. That's not good, not good at all. Okay, um, I don't know how much more of this I can cut, because one of the biggest concerns that I have is that that roof, with all of the holes that are all the way around it, all this crap up in here, whoops, all these holes up in here are going to um, cause the roof to be uh, compromised and soft. Oh my God, I'm knocking everything down here. Gravity has been my worst enemy on these projects. It always has. Anyway, I'm worried that the front of the bus will essentially want to fall down. Um, using my doors as reference points, however, I like that term, Earl. You're the one that taught me that. <laughs> I could close the door and on this side, then reach from the inside and start welding everything together and make sure everything is nice and straight the way it belongs. I see Boomer. He's screwing around right there behind the door. <laughs> anyway, I could probably use it as a reference point, and then I could get everything started and put back together because I'm worried the nose is going to want to fall down. Um, what I probably should do is from the dashboard to the seat pedestal, put a, a bar, or maybe run an X across it, and then maybe another piece from here down to the bottom of the A-pillar to triangulate that little section to keep that square. And then, of course, I could still get in here and still work, too. So that actually is probably a really good idea. Uh, yeah, I think before I start removing any more pieces that I'm gonna have to um, start reinforcing some bits. I don't have any experience working on a bus in this magnitude before. Of course, I can do all this type of fab work. It's just the experience with this type of vehicle I haven't got. I've cut up a million Beetles, I've cut up a million Carmen Gears. I've even cut up the Type 3, but this is my first um, split window bus. So I don't know what's gonna happen here. So if anybody's got suggestions you wanna share with me, that's great, I'll, I'll be glad to listen to you here. Uh, please post down in the comments, tell me what you think. Only if you have experience. If you're just gonna say, well, maybe you should do this. You know, if you don't know yourself, then you're in the same boat that I am. But anybody that's cut off a front end before, you know, share with me your experiences. I'd, I'd really like to know. But one of the things we are gonna cut out is the heater tube. We're just gonna completely remove it. I'm hoping that that's not structural at this point, kind of like the steering column was on Eleanor. As you remember, when I removed the steering column, the entire front end of the Beetle snapped up in the air and then the doors fell and hit the ground because the car was just that flimsy. Uh, I guess we'll see. I'll make sure one of the doors is closed at least to try to retain shape. But I definitely want the heater tube uh, cut out and out of the way. <clears throat> it needs to not be there anymore. And then this whole shifter box that's in here with a shifter mounts on top of an e-brake lever, that's ruined anyway, so we'll just cut it out, get it out of the way. Uh, that's no longer structural because it's not holding the floor up. And I think how I'm gonna reinstall that is by um, getting the floor so it drops into this hole properly and sits down to where it needs to be. Then I'll take that piece, install a shifter on the top of it, bolt it down, drop the whole thing into place so the floor is in place where it needs to be, push it back to where it needs to go, then weld it to the uh, frame of the uh, bus. And then once that's welded into place, unbolt the shifter, take the floor back out, finish welding all the way around it, and then finally put the floor back in. So I think that's probably gonna be one of the best ways to handle that. And once again, I'm knocking everything down up here. As long as I don't knock my beverage down, that would be a sad story. The blue cup is missing! I lost it yesterday when I was out here opening boxes. I don't know where the hell I put it. It's like Mary lost her knife. But I was able to look at the video and found her knife. I saw where she put it down. But unfortunately, the cup wasn't in the video. It was actually on Gregory's tailgate, and it just ended up missing. I don't know what happened to it. It just completely disappeared. Yeah, anyway, got a little rum, got a little cola. It's a Saturday afternoon. I'm enjoying myself. All right, I'm looking at the bottom of this piece, which goes right up underneath the headlight buckets that you can see here. On this side of it, there's a huge lip. And when I look up underneath the bus, at the uh, original piece that's there, that lip is completely gone. 
So yeah, that piece is um, either going to be needed to be replaced in part, perhaps cutting the whole bottom off and welding it together, or a whole new piece. Oh wow. <laughs> this just keeps getting worse the further I dig into this thing. I'm glad I prepared ahead though and CIP1 helped me to get all these wonderful parts. Once again, plugs to CIP1. Excellent company to deal with. Parts are reasonable price, free shipping. Check them out, CIP1.com. Back on this though, this is, uh, this is bad. This is really bad. But I'm not intimidated. I'm not intimidated. It just slows me down for a minute because I gotta look everything over and decide what I'm gonna do next. <laughs> this is just terrible. Oh my God. I think I might be light years ahead at this point if I even remove a door because I think the weight of the door might cause the front end to flex as I start removing more metal. Wow. All right. Well, <laughs> wish me the best, guys. Well, after I shut off the camera, I was doing a little poking around under here and I found this entire piece is loose too. It actually wasn't attached by much anything except for a thread on this side and a thread on that side because it's been compromised. So it looks like in order to get it out, I gotta get the heater tube out and disconnect the wiring harness, which apparently is screwed into it. So we're gonna rip that sucker out of there. It looks like we're replacing the whole thing because if it's gotta come out, I might as well just put a new one in. Okay, I sawzalled on the top, at the bottom, and I started to cut through here, hoping it would separate. If I plan to recycle this, I can easily weld it back in. If I don't, there it is. It needs repairs anyway. Now, I'm not sure what's holding that in. It's like part of the heater tube still. There wasn't much left of this. Wow, okay. Well, I don't believe it. <laughs> Again, I thought I got too much metal from CIP1, but uh, it turns out I'm gonna need every single bit of this thing because this thing is just severely compromised. There's the whole lip here that's missing. Then on the inside, you can see here where the floor is still attached to. It's kind of bowed. And it looks like these little dimples here is where that floor is actually going to uh, tack to. So, uh, yeah. After that coming out as easily as it did with just minimal cut on the end, it uh, <laughs> just kind of fell out. So again, glad to have that piece. Now let's look inside the bus and assess the uh, rust that's inside of there and see just how bad it is or isn't. Well, I really like having that light in there. It makes a huge difference. <laughs> huge difference. Anyways, looking up under here, it looks like it's all surface rust except for the very bottom, which is all kind of buzzy and misshapen. That's where somebody else had done some of their repairs. All of that crap looks to be below the V of the nose. So I think I can cut about a straight line, about an inch below that and replace that entire piece. The good thing is, is I can get that ordered and get it here while I repair the inside. Um, what I think I'm gonna do is just rip out the wire harness. All of it's just kind of in the way. It's just a pain in the ass at this point. Um, being that it's as old as it is, and then I'm gonna put this bus back into primo condition, I'm not gonna put the stock uh, wiring harness back in. I might put a stock replacement, but if I'm gonna do the whole thing, there's no sense of putting old wires in. So I'm gonna just pull all that stuff out of it. It's not doing me any good where it's at. Another funny thing is that, uh, When I hit the roof, it rains rust. I didn't notice that before. But when I was in there shaking that panel out, I started to get uh, just armfuls of it. And it's all on the back of my neck, which is bothering me the most. But uh, <laughs> we're making some good progress here. Those pedals need to come out. The steering column needs to come out. And then I need to wire brush all in here, phosphoric acid, everything. And uh, I think I'm gonna get me a 
gallon of zinc chromate, just like Earl over at Classic Car Creations uses. He told me, don't spray it, you don't need to be breathing that. Well, I'm not gonna spray it, I'll just, just brush it on. It don't need to get anything too dramatic in there, it just needs to be coated. So I need to clean up as much of that rust as possible. Where the uh, shifter box is, there's a beam that runs crossways. When I had my head up underneath pulling out that bumper, I saw that beam is compromised too. And that's, that's a real simple piece to either make or even buy. So I'll get something to replace that and put it back together. But what it does is it supports that box. It's welded to the chassis back here and then up front it rests on top of that. So that does need to be put back in. That's going to be important. All right, I guess at this point I better start uh, just ripping that wire harness out. I'm going to try not to cut it because it still might be useful to somebody, which of course means it's, it's got uh, a dollar value. So I might be able to sell it or on the Volkswagen market, you know how we have our own currency, um, it has trade power. So we'll see what I can do with that. All right, I'm gonna just yank that sucker out of there and go from here. Well, I grabbed these pieces from here and actually just yanked them right off. And you can see the, the line where the two pieces of metal were just overlapped. Uh, whoever did the previous restore on this, that wasn't even a restore, that bullshit repair, they laid galvanized metal over the old rusted metal that was there. You can do that, that's okay, but you gotta make sure that you treat the metal that's here, then you have to seal it from the backside. They may have uh, glued it together with Bondo, which was wrong, glued it together with Bondo, and then sealed up the outside, but from the back, the water was able to leach in and through capillary action it was drawn up and it rusted out the, uh, the old metal that was remaining. It started to rust the galvanized in some spots and it started popping through on the Bondo on the front. So everything just literally peeled off. I mean, I didn't even need tool for that. But what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna hit this with a, um, uh, a sanding wheel and uh, hop around here and just get off as much of that Bondo as possible and see how much more of the metal is compromised. Looking at the inside of the nose, I can tell that it was crashed. Right between the headlights, there's a straight line that goes across this way. So somebody probably rear -end, got rear-ended by this bus. Not hard, but there's obviously a crease that somebody had, uh, instead of bumping it out, they just filled it with Bondo. So I'll be digging into that, and I'll probably beat it out myself. Although I probably don't have to, just being that I don't know what kind of work is underneath it, it's probably a better idea that I just do that anyway. But, um, yeah, I'm quite surprised at just how nasty that work was on there. I mean, just totally foolish. But anyway, the good news is, is once I get the rest of that peeled out cut out, that piece that you see right there on the ground should slot right in. So I'll clean up the rust that's inside of there, uh, get this sucker welded into place, and then at that point I can drop in the inner reinforcement that goes in between the headlights, although I may have to insert that first straight up from underneath, then put this one in. Uh, but once that's all together, then I can just put a new piece of metal across the front of it. I will butt weld the pieces together this way, straight on, just like I did on Eleanor's replacement panels. And then I'll seal them up from the inside as well as the outside. So probably what I'll do then is before I weld that uh, interior reinforcement and I'll lift it up out of the way, get in there, clean it up, dress it up. Of course, phosphoric acid it, and then I'll hit it with some zinc chromate, coat the whole damn thing. And uh, at that point, you can just put a 360 nozzle down in the back and just paint the inside of it. But um, yeah, it's turning into something now. Um, I mean, it's looking worse, but you gotta make it worse before you can make it better. All right, I think it's a uh, beverage round two. I've been out here all afternoon, just cutting and peeling, and well, actually, not so much cutting, just peeling, just ripping shit apart. This car is actually just coming apart by hand, and I still haven't cut myself. See, Duckman doesn't wear gloves because he doesn't cut himself, although I did get myself there on Eleanor the last day she was here, but I found a carpet nail where there shouldn't have been one. And I was reaching in a place that you couldn't wear a glove anyway, so what was the point? <laughs> yeah, Eleanor gave me a goodbye kiss. All right, well, uh, let's continue peeling away at some metal here, and uh, let me show you the inside. I don't know how well the camera's picking it up, but right about where the rust line ends, just a few inches below that, there's a crease in the nose. Right there, there's a, uh, just a dent. So I guess this rear-ended somebody, probably a pickup truck and the bumper most likely left a, a line in the, in the nose of the bus here. And rather than beat it out from the inside, which you effectively could, somebody probably bonded it from the outside, so I'm going to uh, bash that thing out, try to get it back into shape, and then sand off as much of the bondo as you can on the outside, because again, I don't know what kind of work is underneath it. But there's a new panel that's going to uh, replace the old one that was in there, and it should slot right in. It's gonna need a little tweaking, but you know, there it is. 
that's what it's going to look like. And then of course that other panel that you see there, it's there on the ground, is going to go right on the front of the frame here, right up underneath that one. The two of them will butt together. I don't know if they get welded together though. I'm going to have to ask some experts. Chances are they probably do. I've got a spot welder where I could just pinch them. Or maybe I could just get real fancy and uh, put epoxy in there and clamp it all together the way Earl does it. I don't know. Structural. Maybe I should be concerned and do it a welding way or I don't know. Can't do both because you'll burn up the epoxy if you try to spot weld it through the epoxy. Anyway, I still got to pull out the pedal cluster and the steering column, but uh, it's break time. Let me get a drink. Looking at all this inside of here and uh, I really, really wanted to brace all of this. I mean, it just seemed like it was the right thing to do. But as I started to um, just pull at these panels, and I mean, I didn't cut most of them, I just pulled on them. They ripped out with, uh, with little to no effort, proving that they were not structural anymore anyway, although they should have been. So uh, bracing it would have just been unnecessary. So, I mean, I guess it probably would be good to you know, hold it all back into correct shape, but uh, seeing as how the bus isn't collapsing on its own, um, I think I'm gonna be okay. I think I'm gonna be okay. I'll just have to tweak it back into the shape it's supposed to be in when I uh, start putting the panels back together in the front here by closing the doors and uh, <clears throat> pulling, twisting, pinching, yanking, you know, all the fun stuff you do when you're alone. And uh, get the thing straight enough that uh, it should, should go back together properly. Anyway, I'm not worried about it. I'm not worrying about it. I'm just saying that for the people that are watching that don't understand what I've done based on what I had said earlier in the video. Well, somebody out there is going to say, hey, why'd you cut out your heater tube? You know, you probably should have left that. You're going to need it. Hey, this is why. <laughs> it's ruined. I mean, I probably could patch it, but if I'm going to patch it, it has to come out anyway. But uh, yeah, it's, it's in bad shape. It's in bad shape, and I don't plan on using this anyway. I live here in Florida, and because this is going to be a custom bus, I think I'm going to do something completely different. But uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty rough. Massive hole right there. And buses have pretty bad heat anyway, because, and only because, this tube is so long that by the time that the heat comes out on the front, it's cooled down significantly. Now you can try to insulate the tubing in the pipe, and that does help a lot. But the fact is, it's just so far away from the engine, it's just what happens. So anyway, yep, that's why that's getting junked. In fact, I'll throw it in the can right now from here. Well, kind of missed. <laughs> All right, I've managed to avoid using tools today. But down below, that shifter box, and I think we're at a point it needs to come out. So this beam that's underneath it also needs to cut out, so I'm going to cut it here, I'm going to cut it here, and I'm going to cut the box all the way out and just remove the whole thing, just extract it, get it out of the way. Uh, I'll neaten up the cuts on the ends and put in the replacement parts later. Right now I just want it gone. I think it'll be a whole lot easier to work on some of the little parts that are in here. So let's tear it up. From here out, I'm not going to use the uh, Sawzall anymore. The reason for that is because this bus of how well you can see it on camera, but yeah, it's, it's a damn dirt storm from the vibration. And not only do I want that all over me, but I don't feel like breathing it either. So I think what we're gonna use is we're gonna use the plasma cutter. So I'm gonna set up my GoPro and I'm gonna show you a little action of that sucker doing its job. And I love that thing. It works really good. And they'll cut through that thing in no time too. So here we go.
Well, I think that's not too bad for one day's work. Uh, we got everything torn out in the front here, so complete demolition. And we've got the parts just dropped in and test fitted. And they look a little wonky, but that's to be expected because again, Gregory had been crashed and this stuff is aftermarket. So some, some of the stuff isn't gonna fit absolutely correct. So I'm gonna have to tweak it a little bit. But just looking at this overall, um, it looks very promising. Everything on the front here is uh, is happy. Everything seems to sit the way it needs to, and it should need very, very minimal trimming around the edges before I can get it welded in. But before I can do that, I still have to rebuild the rest of the front end. I need to make sure the door is open and closed correctly, and then I'm gonna attach the floor. And I think the floor is actually a big part of the structural rigidity from side to side this way, because when that door is open, the lower part of the A-pillar will push in this way. So that floor needs to resist that, that action. So yeah, I think that floor is actually a big part of the, uh, the door structure, believe it or not, even though it's not part of the door. That should have, keep everything more squared. Anyways, um, yeah, I think we're, uh, we're pretty well off. Let's go ahead and wrap up the video. Go in here with Daddy and make a video. Yeah, I know, Daddy stinks. <laughs> Ah. Well, I gotta say, it's uh, been a really, really good day for demolition. Right, Skeeter? You've been watching me all day. Oh, oh, oh show them wings. Yeah, I know, Daddy stinks. He's been working outside all day. He's filthy. <laughs> good day for demolition. I got the front end ripped off of this bus, and, and quite to my surprise, and I still don't believe it, almost everything removed with no tools. Just the front end just peeled off. It was so rusty, and the bullshit repairs that were there from the uh, previous owner before Mary or whoever did it, I don't know. Terrible, glued together with Bondo, the rust got up behind the Bondo, so what happens? It just peeled right off. I pulled off almost everything on the front end with uh, only using the Sawzall, I think twice. One time to nick a little thread off, and another time as I started to cut a panel, it shook it loose <laughs> and all the welds broke and it just fell right out. Uh, I still can't believe it's been that easy, but. After that, I removed the steering box and uh, some wiring harnesses and some other stuff, and it uh, the floor dropped into place. It's just everything fits. It's gonna need a little bit of tweaking. It's not absolutely perfect. I mean, we're not out of the woods yet, but the fact is everything did go into place, and as a trial fit, it actually did work without having to trim anything around the edges. It's still gonna need some trimming because it took some force to get it into where it's at. Um, hopefully, I'll be able to get it out. I know it's gonna be a little difficult, but uh, to my friends at CIP1, Thank you very much, you guys. I do appreciate it. Duckman Cycles VW Garage. This is Skeeter the Duck. Yes, it is. <laughs> We're going to have a really, really nice bus, and hopefully we'll have the majority of it together by the end of October for the Rare Air Emerald Coast Volkswagen Show right here in Pensacola, Florida. And I think it's on October 26th. Don't hold me to it. Go to rareairvw.com and check it out. Uh, you'll find the events up there on the page. And uh, I think I've already got Gregory entered, despite... I didn't even start working on him yet, but I've already got him entered because that's the plan. So hopefully, even if he's not driving, I'll be able to get him dragged over there. <laughs> that is part of the plan. We're still waiting on Mary to pull up the VIN tag. That's kind of a kind of a big issue. I gotta get the numbers, and I still need enough lead time to be able to get the paperwork processed. So that's on her for that. If not, it's getting dragged over there. And uh, in that case, we'll just drive it around the fairgrounds. Right, Skeeter? You tell the world how happy you are? You want Daddy to make you a hamburger tonight? Yeah, it's Labor Day weekend. We're supposed to have barbecue. Yeah, I want Daddy to grill you a burger? I bet you do. I'll make you some french fries, too. <laughs> so anyways, as always, thanks for watching. Really, I do appreciate it. Licky, likey, comment, subscribe, pluck the dingle belly. That way you get updates every time I upload a new video. And don't forget to check out CIP1.com. That's right. These guys were absolutely awesome in getting me the right parts for Gregory. And uh, really, I wouldn't go anywhere else unless they don't have it. If they don't have it, you know, that's fine. But... Go to CIP1 before you go anywhere else, where I've always gone. And they give you the best prices, and with free shipping, you can't beat it. Right, Peter? Yes, it's true. <laughs> Thanks for watching.